G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Tuesday evening here in Australia and the market has jumped up again. We finally were sitting perfectly right on that $3 trillion mark. So very impressive. Uh, I mean, you just look at some of the gains. Bitcoin up 3%. That doesn't seem like much, but when something's, you know, at $60,000, uh, a 3% move is a pretty good move. And again, you know, <laughs> you might only get 3 4 5% in a year from some stocks, let alone in a 24-hour period. So you need to remember that. Now, again, I do have to say this. Number one, none of this is financial advice, but number two, you know, things are pretty good at the moment, really, you know, frothy again, you know, there's coins that are doing really well. I don't want to harp on, but please, if you're really in profit, just at least consider taking some profit. Again, I'd never tell you what to do with your money, and I haven't taken too much profit yet. I'm just letting you know that I'm at least considering it. I'm looking to start taking some profits. Doesn't have to be today, doesn't have to be tomorrow, doesn't have to be this week, but definitely soon. Things are starting to move fast. And it moves up really fast, but I tell you, it goes down t literally 10 times faster. You know, it'll take, you know, a month to get from, you know, 70,000 to maybe 100,000. It'll go from 100,000 <laughs> down to 70,000 in a matter of hours if it really does dump. So again, and I'm not saying it's a stopping at 100,000. I'm just saying it's easy to get carried away in, you know, moments like this and then all of a sudden... You just get caught with your pants down and there's nothing worse. You will feel a lot better if you've taken profits and the market does tank than you will feel worse if you take profits and it continues to go up. Trust me. You, you, if it continues to go up, you will be kicking stones. We all do a little bit. But geez, when the market turns and suddenly goes violently down to the other side, if you've taken some profits, you, you'll be stoked. You really will be. I can't express that enough because I've made those mistakes. So again, I'm not going to harp on, you know my opinion. Let's have a look. All right, Bitcoin dominance up a little bit, still under 43%. We've got a bit of volume there, nearly 20%. Nice to be expected, you know, start of the week. The market's fresh, looking, you know, frothy. <laughs> 68,000, I mean, nice. Bitcoin will probably get to 70,000 in the next probably, might even happen tonight, I don't think so, but I'd say by probably sort of Wednesday Australia time, I wouldn't be surprised if we're there and above. ETH gas prices on the rise again uh, and again to be expected there's a lot of people now jumping into altcoins and doing all sorts of things smart contract stuff happening so it is what it is all right what's done the best in the last 24 hours then cool nice loop ring so uh, that's that's a good move to far out nearly 30 percent in uh, 24 hours I had loop ring uh, it did really well for me, uh, and I made some good profit. It, you know, unfortunately, it's always the way. I sold it all, uh, kicking myself now. I would have liked to have held onto it, but anyway, look, even BAT basic attention token, very nice. I've been getting those from using the Brave browser, so I might have to collect on those and get some profits. Uh, Helium, nice move. Litecoin, look out of nowhere. Litecoin making big moves. Just when you think it's dead and you've completely given up on it, V Chain as well. Dash coming out of nowhere so look eos there's some ethereum classic bitcoin cash good lord it's all the old school coins just coming out of nowhere and starting to make some moves so you know good for any of the sort of ogs i guess who've been holding on for a while and are hopefully starting to make a few gains at the very very least all right so the market's up 2.5 percent of course it's going to look nice but what hasn't performed so well all right, there we go, Cardena, Cadena, sorry. And again, it pumped really, really hard, so it might go down for a few days. Same with SafeMoon, it was pumping. Don't ask me why, but it was. AVAX, Crypto.com, Engine, Rune, Wi-Fi, uh, even Matic, again, having a bit of a pullback, got up close to its old all-time high, uh, and now had another pullback. I think it's just going to continue to bounce around. Matic is a really good project, uh, and it's a matter of time until it just really has its moment where it just pumps really, really hard. Now, again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. Same with Engine. I don't think it's done yet by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's just, you know, people got really excited, got a little bit overheated. People are taking some profits. The traders, again, taking their profits. Uh, and it'll just be a matter of time until they continue to go higher. That is, until the bull run's done, whenever that may be. <laughs> and that really is, you know, kind of the million-dollar question. We all wish we, you know 
knew when it was coming and then we could get out, you know, those perfect times. But again, the truth is, you know, nobody regularly, you can fluke it, but no one regularly picks the top and picks the bottom. And you don't have to, you just got to be somewhere in there, three quarters of the way. Pick it a quarter of the way from the t to the top, you know what I mean? So you miss out on 25%. And then again, pick it a quarter of uh, the way, you know, from the bottom. So, you know, you lose 25% then there's all that, you know, 50% in the middle. And again, you know, you might get closer than that, but you can make a ton of money in there. So don't beat yourself up thinking you have to try and pick the exact tops and bottoms. You don't. We all want to, but yeah, the chances are, they're just, I won't say impossible. I'm sure some person flukes it every now and then, but generally, yeah, we've got no clue. And you might pick the top on like Bitcoin, but then you'll have a hard time picking the top on any of the others, you know what I mean? So that's what you gotta remember. And trying to pick the absolute top of, you know, 10, 20, 30 different projects, whew, I'd, I'd love to put money uh, on the chances that that doesn't happen for someone because that's a sure bet right there. All right, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. As we can see, made a really nice move. I mean, look at that, boom, straight up. And again, here we've got this uh, marker here to show that we're looking to get to around about 88,000. Now, again, I'm not saying it's going to do it. We simply took that line from over here. It was here up to here because it was forming a, a bull flag, a bullish pennant. And then you drag it over, pop it here, and it gives you a rough indication of Bitcoin should be getting to around about 88,000. Now, it doesn't mean it has to do it in this line. It could go up, travel sideways for a while, go up, travel sideways for a while, go up and then, you know, do it way over here around the 27th of December. I don't know if it's going to happen then. I don't know if it's going to happen, period. But that's what we're roughly looking for. So again, yeah, it's so hard. It really is. Like Again, you know, like, Lots of people saying it's going to 200,000, 300,000. Uh, again, you know, possible Bitcoin super cycle and maybe it goes to half a million. Who knows? I, I would love it. I just, I'm not sure. I really don't know where it's going. I want to see us really get past 85,000 first. Again, my gut feeling says somewhere between 70 and 85,000. We have a big correction. I don't think it'll be the top, but I just think it's going to be something to shake everybody out. And again, you know... <laughs> This is kind of where I'd be looking, somewhere down around sort of 52 to around about sort of 60-ish thousand dollars, uh, a crash back down to there would not surprise me because you can guarantee everyone's getting long at the moment. They're all going, I'm long in Bitcoin and that's, you know, they'll let that happen for a while until it builds up enough. Uh, and then they know how to short it to the exact price to wreck all the people going long. And then guess what? They pump it back up again. That is, you know, to wreck everyone going short uh, after that stage as well. So really, I would be looking for somewhere around the $60,000 mark down to around about 52000 if we have a hefty correction. I don't think it comes back to 52. I'd really be thinking more somewhere around about here, maybe even sort of 64. But again, we'll just have to wait and see. That's just me having a bit of a guess on what I think might happen. It's not what you know I know to happen or anything like that. All right, a couple of stories I want to look at. So financial service giant ING is working on a DeFi lending project. This is massive. You know, banks are actually going to use DeFi now. You know, there's been talk of it happening and, you know, which lending project. And again, I get the feeling like Aave is in there with a good shot. They are bringing out Aave Pro. So is that going to be it? And then that's 4% that uh, they're going to offer and you have to be KYC to get that. So now again, I'm not saying it is Aave. I'm just saying there was talk about Aave Pro coming out. And again, with all KYC, AML and all the rest of it, this might be part of it. Now, whether there'll be other, you know, platforms in there, YFI, things like that, Compound, Curve, who knows? We'll have to wait and see. But the banks are going to use DeFi. They simply cannot match what DeFi does. They can't, pure and simple. So what they have to do is adopt it. And they can't not adopt it because when everyone finds out about DeFi, and eventually everyone will, it could take 20, 30 years for it to get to the rest of the world but if they find out about it and go why have I had my money in the bank and I've been earning 0.025 percent on my money and I could have gone to DeFi and been getting at least minimum four percent to maybe more hence why the banks are coming to DeFi they have no choice but they are going to try and find DeFi projects again that are you know have KYC and AML and you know anti-terrorism money you know sort of stuff all those kind of things 
looks like Ave could be there, but again, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not saying it is going to be Ave. There's a lot of projects out there, you know, Compound, Ave, you know, maybe BlockFi, who knows, uh, you know, Celsius. <laughs> it's so hard to know exactly who they're going to go through, but maybe they start to sort of copy uh, the sort of things that Celsius is doing as well. And speaking of BlockFi, BlockFi have filed for a physically based Bitcoin ETF. I think this will be great. This is, I really hope BlockFi can get up and they be, can be one of the first to get a spot-based uh, Bitcoin ETF. Number one, that's what we need. We don't want these futures ones where it's all just based on the price. We want people actually buying the actual reserve itself, Bitcoin, and it, I think it'd be great for BlockFi to be able to get one of that. I wouldn't be surprised. Well, Celsius, I mean, they went out and they've actually bought a whole stack of mining stuff. So they're mining their own Bitcoin and that helps them to pay the rewards. And BlockFi getting a Bitcoin, a spot Bitcoin ETF, I think that'd be great for BlockFi. And again, would really help. We're, we're still yet to see what's going to happen with all this lending stuff. You know, yeah, it's going to be interesting. You know, we... we we hope, you know, we got our fingers and toes crossed that, you know, whatever legislation they bring out, you know, is it's it's not going to be exactly what we want. It simply won't be. It's always going to be a little bit less. But as long as it just doesn't, you know, completely kill and stifle, you know, all that in innovation and stuff, then no worries. I think they'll be hardest on the stable coins. The stable coins, I think they're going to hit get hit hard. And I think these, you know, anything that number one is trying to use a stable coin. I think a lot of stable coins will go away. I think they'll be, again, they'll have to be, you know, regulated like a bank and most of them won't be able to do it, so they'll simply disappear. Uh, and then the stable coins that are left and around, I, I think it, it'll probably be that 4%. percent i just, they'll somehow find a way to stop anyone from getting, you know, 10% and, you know, 20% and 30% and all that kind of stuff. Now, again, not financial advice. I don't know that for a fact, but that's just my gut feeling. I think they'll really come down hard on the stable coins. Uh, but that will also then affect the other ones. You know, you go through BlockFi and Celsius and you're getting 5% on Ethereum and Bitcoin and that. That may also affect that. We'll have to wait and see. But I like that BlockFi uh, is still on the front foot and trying to get out there and get a spot ETF, Bitcoin ETF. Very nice. Right, Discord. The CEO has hinted that they're going to possibly become Ethereum compatible. This is big again, you know, people are really, and even myself, you know, we get worried about Ethereum and it's high gas fees and that, but Ethereum's where it's at. I mean, they're just, there's so many people building on it, but they are starting to lose ground. Don't get me wrong. A lot of other people are building on other platforms now because of, you know, ETH 2.0 just taking too long and the gas fees are just ridiculous. I would, I wouldn't be surprised, I should say. If they didn't then go towards a layer two, you know, maybe Polygon, Arbitrum, uh, Optimistic Rollups and things like that, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. But again, Discord, I mean, that is not small at all. That's quite big, you know, it's like Reddit and things like that. If you don't know what Discord is, uh, you know, go have a look. There's so much stuff on there. It's, you know, like forums, basically, you can get on and, you know, find projects that you like and talk to people, you know, about those projects and the teams and things like that. Uh, and the fact that they are looking at going onto Ethereum, again, shows just how big Ethereum is. You know, again, losing ground, but still, they are the big dog when it comes to smart contracts. Be interesting to see what happens with Bitcoin when they can finally get smart contracts on there and how that goes. But I think Ethereum's just too far ahead at the moment for, for anyone to catch them. But they're not so far ahead that uh, other projects can't come and take some of that uh, ground from them particularly if E2.0 doesn't roll out sooner rather than later, especially with the fees. I think someone said, I think it was Lark, said it's $500 to do a swap on Uniswap at the moment. That is ridiculous. Robinhood, customer emails stolen. So there was a hack. Now they've come out and said that, you know, no financial data is at risk, but, you know, everyone's email address has now probably been, you know, passed throughout, <coughs> excuse me, the dark web and you're going to be bombarded with all sorts of you know random emails that you never really wanted and you know this is a real problem uh it happened to you know ledger as well the same thing they got hacked and then everyone you know whose email address was found through the ledger thing starts getting all these random emails and it just becomes a real pain you know it makes you want to go and change your email address but sometimes that's easier said than done if you've got so many you know different emails coming to one 
email address to simply go and change it then you got to go back through and you know update everyone with your new email address so that's just yeah that can be a pain in itself but anyway what can you do robin hood they've had some issues you know particularly where there was the rumor that they were selling data to uh the big uh, hedge funds and that so they could counter trade their own members uh, me personally I don't touch Robin Hood uh, I don't have anything to do with it I've just heard some bad things about it and this doesn't help that obviously their their security isn't quite up to scratch but in saying that uh, I really like Ledger and they had the same issue and that was quite disappointing as well anyway moving on Square have unveiled plans to help Bitcoin become the native currency for the internet I'm it'll be interesting to see i get the feeling like really uh ethereum is going to be more the uh money for the internet and bitcoin is just going to be the store of value for the internet that's how i see it but anyway square inc is a firm that its focus is on helping bitcoin become the native currency of the internet ceo jack dorsey explained we have a number of in initiatives uh, toward that goal that will help Bitcoin reach a mainstream audience while at the same time strengthening the network and the ecosystem. Now, he was also asked whether Square is looking to expand into crypto beyond Bitcoin buy and sell, such as offering other cryptocurrencies and enabling users to engage in defined NFT ecosystems. And he said we're not. So he's, a, he's not a Bitcoin maxi, but he's definitely Bitcoin uh, focused. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you're allowed to choose to you know really focus on one thing and quite often if you focus more on one thing you'll do a better job than focusing on 20 different things so you know there's some <laughs> uh, little tidbits for you right there but you know i really like jack dorsey i like what he's doing i just i'm not sure about bitcoin being money again not while it's still got so much room to move up once it becomes stable yeah i could see it being like that but until then it's just a store of value it is and it's the best store of value that you know we can find there's nothing better than it at the moment now there's periods where it's really really bad uh, and that can be for up to a year and unfortunately if you bought it at the top it might take you four years to get back to kind of break even but you know again based on previous history if you simply hold for four years you're probably going to be well up in Bitcoin. Now, again, just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it will happen in the future. But generally, the best way to try and guess what might happen in the future is to look what's happened in the past. Right, last but not least, Coinbase. They're going to launch its wallet as a standalone browser extension. I like this. So it's going to be something like Firefox and things like that. <sighs> Coinbase making some smart moves. You know, they've got their hands in everything. They really are one of the biggest exchanges out there. I think Binance still holds that uh, title only just. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe uh, Coinbase is still a fair ways behind. But look, there's a lot of competition now. You know, Coinbase, FTX, um, Voyager, so many out there. And again, this space is just really starting to bubble at the moment. And again, the million dollar question, it really is a million dollar question, maybe tens or hundreds of millions, depending. You know where's excuse me where's the top going to be and you know then once we know what the top is what's the low are we going to see 80 you know 90 percent dips in bitcoin or is it just too far along now that maybe the worst we can probably see is sort of maybe 50 to 70 percent and you know that may still be a fair way away as well I, you know my answer to you is i don't know i've got no idea i really can't tell but I'm just going to base it on, you know, again, sort of my gut feeling. And my gut feeling is based on a bit of TA, a bit of uh, sentiment. Uh, and yeah, that's probably really a TA and sentiment. Sorry, last, there's a third one. What's happening in the world? You know, there's all sorts of things going on that can obviously affect markets. And the kind of fact is, whenever one market really gets hit, they all generally sort of get hit in some way so you need to keep an eye out for that something could be happening in you know the some other market i'm not going to say exactly which one because i don't know but you know probably stocks and if stocks get hit really really hard then chances are crypto are still going to get hit maybe not as hard but also maybe harder because that generally what happens with the cryptos we go up 10 times as much and we go down 10 times as much those are the things you need to remember when you're in the crypto space the highs are amazing but the lows, they are gut-wrenching. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. They are absolutely horrible. And that is, you know, if you can get through a bull market and a bear market and you just got to get through one at the moment, 
your season, you know, without panic selling and all the rest of it and losing a whole stack of money, that basically makes you a seasoned veteran. Nearly, you know, it's hard to say an OG, really. The OGs are, you know, probably pre-2015, but, yeah, you get through one of those and then you are really set up to make, you know, some unbelievable gains in the next one. So, just again, another bit of, uh, a tidbit of information there. Never financial advice. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. You should all be on that game train, and I'll see you next time.